Hey, Sam at Relove Guitars here. Um, just thought this is worth a quick five minute video. Fresh in from China today. Two things. The first one that you might be interested in are, are, is our the headless bridge units. Now, I've tried out two different kinds and I've ended up settling on ordering these. So I've got five of these little things arrived, as you can see. And there's a sixth one somewhere else in a box. I can't remember where I put it. So I've used a standard, well, I've used some inexpensive one-piece Chinese bridges in the past, um, headless bridges, and I wanted to try out some standalone units, um, mainly because of the simplicity they offer. Now, I tried two different kinds, or experimented, explored two different kinds. There's this sort of sexy-looking one here, which has um, you know, a nice little brass uh, saddle, no, yeah, saddly bit here. And then you pull back, and it's very, it's damn handsome, right? It's a nice looking unit. And the good thing is, you can also, without canting the back end up, you can, if you want to, tune it like that, or make, make a tool that you can get in the back and tune it. So that's kind of cool, but its flaw, its weakness, is it's designed to stand in this little, sit in this little cradle, which means the whole unit has to be held down into that little metal bit. That has to be screwed into the wood and this has to be held in by a single um, move, a single screw holding it down. Now, <clears throat> I might find a better quality screw to do that job, but all of that, just to for that one, you know, to attach that, it's a, it feels nice, but I'm not convinced. That, right? So I, I sort of went backwards to the first one I got, which was this thing. Now this also stands but the, uh, on, the, on the deck, you screw it into the wood through those two holes. But the amazing thing about this one is, first of all, it's tilted upwards, right? so you, you can see straight away that you, you don't have to do an awful lot to get access to the back of it. Well, that's going to be quite difficult when you've got all five in a row, <clears throat> okay, with hardly any space between them, because they don't leave you a lot of space when you cluster them all together. Um, however, what I've noticed is, um, in the guitar I've made, I, I slope the body away very slightly there, but not like a big cutout that you get in some of these headless guitars, but that's enough to work. And the simplicity of this is really clever. You've got uh, a saddle that moves backwards and forwards and up and down. It's a little bit fiddly, but once you set it in place, that's okay. But the, the simplest part is the ball end of the string lives in here, and as you rotate this, it just pulls the string and you tune all of it from there, and it just holds under pressure the whole time. And to me, that seemed about as simple and as sturdy a device couldn't go wrong with that. I can't see how that's going to fail uh, under load. All right, so that's what I really wanted a reliability. So I'm pleased with that. So I've got one, there's the other five. Now, here's the other thing here's the other thing that came today that I was quite interested in, and it's the I don't know how well you can see this it's the Chinese adjustable nut in, in a oh, it really is brass for a change. You don't usually do that. They usually end up with something that's trying to be brass, but ends up being co uh, chromed steel. So what they've done is they've done what I do, kind of. They've made a base plate with slight indentations in um, to hold, to take the weight of the nut, the downward force, but also to stop it. You can't, I can't bloody do this. It's not actually doesn't work very well. Stop it theoretically. Stop it moving sideways. But it, do you know what? It doesn't. Um, anyway, that's the idea. Um, and then they've given you a little a strap nut <coughs> all geared up. Now it's, it's quite nicely made, I have to say. I'm going to try and keep it a bit still. It's got G&M written on it. It should be. It's about 15 quid's worth. Um, now the, what you have to go on with here is, is to make the decision. It is, first of all, it looks neat. The problem you've got is to get this working, the minimum, I should have done this the other way around, the minimum uh, depth you're going to get this working at is the two parts combined plus a little bit of lift if you get what I mean right so you obviously have to put the two parts together uh, in your in your slot um, plus then you have to have some room to raise it so you've got to have a minimum let's call it uh, depends which end of it you look at but a minimum of um, nearly five millimeters at the edges and then higher in the center now that would already start out being too tall all right, so once you put it in a standard strat slot, which I haven't got kicking around to experiment with, but once you were, if you were able to, first of all, if you were able to just fit that into your slot, you would find that those, the strings 
sitting flat on there with no adjustment, that would sit slightly proud of the first fret, which is what you don't want. You want to start on the first fret and then be able to work upwards from there. That's the whole point of having the adjustable nut. Um, so you, you really can't afford to have it starting off above the ideal first fret action when it's at its lowest in the given slot. So the problem with this is it's going to force you, I believe, to cut, um, chop down the slot to a particular given depth, uh, which is okay if you're building something from scratch, but you, you know, you're going to end up making a permanent modification on somebody's, your own guitar. The other thing I'm noticing here, by the way, is this isn't actually flat, um, um, you know, what the heck, but if you look at these two parts together, they, they aren't perfectly, you know, they're not machined flat, and this one bends away slightly. Well, that's not the end of the world. What you really care about is whether once engaged, these screws will sit against the um, the brass and fit into the little grooves. That's all you really care about, because you want this to not slide sideways. If I can even hold the damn thing. Now, I have to say, these grooves really aren't, yeah, maybe, under load. They might just hold it. Um, <coughs> but yeah, that's the lot. So, uh, actually, I would refer, defer to using, personally using a tusk nut, which, first of all, all of these slots are going to be better to begin with, uh, more lubricated than your, Jap your Japanese, your Chinese made brass thing. Although it's cute looking, I'd go with tusk. And then the other part is I would take the tusk down and exactly until it's ready to um, the strings are on the first fret and then I would drill and tap and uh, yes you'd be going against the rosewood um, but you know what my experience is that once it compresses a small amount it doesn't actually change much after that. Um, I'm also looking here these grub screws are so incredibly close to the edge of this brass that's I can see it deforming the edge here um, liable I could snap probably snap that off with the pliers. <coughs> so yeah. You know, good thing is they're quite big grub screws because it's in metal. The downside is it's still too close to the edge here. I can see it deforming, and it means you could just break it off. 15 quid, more trouble than it's worth. But I thought you'd be interested to see that. I bought it just for the sheer hell of making a quick video and saying, don't probably bother. Now, could I use that bit on its own? Yes, I could probably get away with using this, using this bit as is, but then it would only be as good as the state of the the slots in there and to be fair if they aren't better than the tusk nut slots then I'm going to suffer from needing to widen them or whatever else has to happen so I just think it's a it's hiding to nothing I would rather take a, a tusk unit and convert that because at least when I finished I know that I've got the best lubricated surface in the world to take the strings and this is cute but not worth it anyway there you go um, exciting things from China um, Psychic spies, you might even call them. Who knows? But there you go. Uh, cute, needs to modify. Uh, straight off the off the block. Um, you more usable and actually m kind of more robust, and that's what you really want. Plus the the canted up end. Now, uh, uh, just to recap on this, I won't really know until I've got all six of them stay uh, shoved together in a pile like this because they are going to be fairly close together. I'm not actually going to know whether this actually is technically very usable. Um, kind of looks like there's just enough room. It's about a millimetre either way, but we shall see. But it's a better design, so pretty, cool looking, more robust, a bit less sexy, but actually more practical in every way. All right, thank you very much. See you again soon.